Hello, my name is Thomas Kleckers. I'm the product manager responsible for force measurement technology at HPM. My colleague, Michael Gux, is standing right next to me. He also works in product management and is responsible for amplifiers used in industrial applications such as our new PMX amplifier system. Today, we want to show you how to connect force transducers to such amplifier systems. Strain gauge amplifiers have two purposes. On the one hand, they supply the sensor with the correct voltage. On the other hand, they amplify the force transducer's low output signal to allow analysis. In this context, the technical challenge is to ensure the correct supply voltage. In general, strain gauge base sensors have 350 to 1000 ohm resistance, which means that a considerable current flows through the sensor supply lead. The cable has electrical resistance, which on the whole results in a voltage drop in the cable. This voltage drop varies with the variation of temperature since the electrical resistance of copper is temperature dependent. This is taken into account in the six-wire circuit used, for example, with the S2M transducer. In addition to the two supply leads to the Wheatstone bridge and the two leads feeding the sensor's voltage signal to the PMX, there are two other leads that permanently check whether the right supply voltage is available right at the sensor. These are the so-called sense leads. Typically, force transducers come with a test certificate. This test certificate provides information about the relationship between an applied force and an output signal and is valid for the individual sensor. Hence, a sensor and a test certificate always belong together. In addition, a force transducer's label gives the sensitivity. However, this is not the exact sensitivity specified in the test certificate. For this reason, it makes sense to enter the exact sensitivity as specified in the test certificate into the amplifier system to achieve maximum accuracy. Hello, as you've heard earlier, my name is Michael Gux. As we have just heard from Thomas Kleckers, S2M transducer is a very precise 0.02% transducer. It is connected to the first measurement channel of the PMX using a sensor cable that is suitable for drag chains and a pre wired plug. PMX provides various measurement inputs and we've developed a 4.8 kHz carrier frequency module for these particular Wheatstone sensors. The PMX has a modular structure and we have a standard TCPIP Ethernet interface for connection to any browser compatible DTE device. In this case, we have a PC. It could just as well be a tablet or even a smartphone. We will now make all other settings via the web browser. We have now connected sensor S2 to the PMX's first measurement channel. The channel LED is now green, showing that the wiring and the sensors are being read correctly. The measuring chain can now be correctly adjusted using the sensitivity specified in the test certificate. We just type PMX in the browser line to access the web browser running on the PMX. The menu opens and I can now easily access the channel settings via the third user level system administrator. We will now configure the measurement channel. Extending the S2M connecting cable is not a problem. HBM offers many low capacitance six wire cable versions that can be used for extension. Some force transducers, such as the new C9C or the new U9C, use four wire circuits. This is because there's not enough room for the required adjusting elements in the force transducer itself. Therefore, the cable is used for adjusting the temperature coefficient of sensitivity. Please note, the specifications apply at the end of the cable that is provided. Do not cut the cable. If you want to extend the cable, use the six-wire circuit. If you want to connect such a force transducer to a PMX or another amplifier, it is important that you use bridges from the supply voltage to the sense lead, as we did here in the connector. 
In this case, parameterization of the PMX and connection will work in exactly the same way as with the S2M. Provided that the bridges have been wired correctly, the PMX identifies a connected Wheatstone bridge and the green LED lights so you can be sure that you have correctly connected your transducer. A C9C is configured in exactly the same way as the S2M. It also comes with a test certificate which enables you to type this force transducer's individual sensitivity in the PMX web browser. We will now type the sensitivities in the web browser. We need to go to the administrator level to enter the parameters. I therefore access the administrator level now since the device may only be parameterized on this level. Then I click the amplifier tab and here I can type the individual sensitivities and settings for the amplifier. The first step is to set the sensitive type. In this case, it is a Wheatstone bridge, 4 millivolts per volt, then the two sensitivities for the zero and full scale values. I can read the values from the test certificate, and finally, I set the measuring chain to zero, then I can start measuring immediately. For ease of understanding, I can assign the channel a name to enable the signals to be allocated more easily later. With all the force transducers we've put into operation so far, Michael typed the sensitivity in the web browser to correctly adjust the measuring chain. But it is also possible to order force transducers with a built-in electronic chip where the individual force transducer sensitivity is stored. This technology enables the amplifier to be parameterized automatically and thus to prevent errors. The only thing you have to do is connect the force transducer to the PMX and wait a minute. PMX reads the sensitivity and is automatically configured correctly. Now we have seen two ways to put into operation a measuring chain. On the one hand, by entering the parameters from the test certificate. On the other hand, by transferring the parameters from the TEDS chip to the amplifier. TEDS stands for Transducer Electronic Data Sheet and significantly facilitates setting up the system and maintenance. With some force transducers, for example U93, the TEDS chip is directly integrated in the enclosure. Solutions in the plug are available for other force transducers. There is still a third possibility, adjusting the measuring chain through direct loading of the sensor and removing the load and a corresponding web browser. Well, thank you very much for watching our video. More information, be sure to visit hbm.com forward slash force.